wait a minute, what do we have here? What is that? What Are you going to a British wedding? What is this? No, I'm only going to lunch. You're going to lunch and you wear that to lunch? After you and I are done, I'm going to lunch. But there's a reason I'm wearing a hat that I normally wouldn't. Is I think you knew, or we'd mentioned, that for the past month and a half or so, I've been going once a week to have liquid iron infusions for my anemia. Mm -hmm. And I had the last one last week, and I mentioned to the nurse uh, while I was there, I said, you know, I haven't had chemo since January, but I have a sense I'm losing more hair, which I had lost, I have very thin hair, but it wasn't like going bald, but it was. I was losing hair. And it seemed to have been coming out the last couple of weeks. And she said, of course, that happens with iron infusions. Well, nobody told ah, me. You thought it was the chemo. Well, it couldn't be because it stopped in January. So I wondered why my hair was falling out. And um, apparently it's not only chemo that does this to you. And so one of the things you learn from pancreatic cancer is that things like going bald are not very important in life. And you don't really care if you've got bald spots. And I was toying with the idea if it got worse that I would become one of the first women to say it's okay to be partially bald and walk around that way. Um, but, you know, when you get better and you're not so sick anymore, you get over that and you would like to have some hair. <laughs> By the way, I have not mentioned this is my, uh, for better term, lack of a better way of describing her, my ex-wife, Ronnie Bennett. Yes. It is not just a curiosity that the two of us use the same last name, and, but hers is legal, mine isn't. Well, you know, by now everybody knows that you're both of those things, Bennett and Schwartzman. Well, you know something? You did something. People always said to me, well, how, how do your, uh, your wives refer to you? Well, to begin with, my current wife knows me as Alex Bennett, and that's basically it. You know, she, didn't, she stayed with her name because she didn't want that last name, Schwartzman. Okay. I understand. I, do you know how many times in my life I had to say, Schwartzman, no T and two N's? I, yeah. And nobody gets yeah. it when you say that. But uh, 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 what was I going to say? I was, I was going in a direction here. How do we have the name Bennett? Oh, oh, well, no, we know that, how that happened. That was part yes. of the divorce settlement, that you could use the name Bennett. You know, and right. then you, you legally adopted it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but they, do you want to know why? Why? Because when we broke up, mm -hmm. I kind of lost my job. I couldn't very well show up for work the next day yeah. producing your show. So I had to go look for work. And everybody in the radio business and TV business in New York City knew me as Ronnie Bennett. So that if I called up and said, hey, this is Ronnie Schwartzman, they wouldn't know who I was. Right. So I had to use it that way to call and start looking for work. Right. And then, you know, how was that? What do I go back to my maiden name? What do I do? So I kept Bennett. Yeah. And that and, and that it has been ever since. Yes. Uh, but uh, no, there was some there's some direction I was going and I, I can't remember what it is. Now. There's something about your wives and your last names. My wives and my last names. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. She didn't want to take Schwarzman. OK, so she kept it. kept her name. And my the problem was now there was some th something had to do with Schwarzman that had to do with my real name and I can't remember it now. Ben and Alex. The, oh, oh yes, yes. Okay, now I remember. See, I went to a doctor as I mentioned this to Will Durst uh, yesterday. Uh, that I went to a doctor yesterday for my uh, for the numbness in my feet, and so he asked me some questions to see how lucid I was and he asked me my name where I lived you know my how old am I blah 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 all of that and then he says who's the governor of New York and I froze I couldn't remember the name of the governor of New York <laughs> and then he said well I'll make it easier who who's the mayor of New York City and I couldn't remember I would and it, it bothered me all day and then I suddenly realized I don't give a shit about local politics so I never watch <laughs> any of that stuff so I don't hear Cuomo constantly in my ear or de Blasio constantly in my ear uh, but not being able to remember that is kind of the same as not being able to remember other things so when you ask that question when we started going into this now I can't remember where I went see See, yeah, that's what happens to us old folks. But I can remember well, about the hat because I no longer want to show off my bald spot. 
I have a large okay, but wait a minute. I'm hats. still trying to go with that Schwarzman thing. Oh, well, oh. I'm going with the hat thing. And then she couldn't, she couldn't, she didn't want the name. Uh, it was uh, too long a name. Uh, I can't remember where I was going with that. Uh, so uh, that's what, what happens when you have numb feet. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, I switched from calling you Ben to calling oh, you Oh, that's Al. it. That was it. We're back to where it was. Now, don't, don't. <laughs> don't confuse don't, 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 here, <laughs> These are two old people having an adulpated moment. Uh, 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 I know what no, I'm saying. I always pointed out to you that what you would do is in company, you would refer to me as Bennett. So I there, did? Yes. You came up with the idea because when you said Bennett, most people thought you were affectionately calling me by my last name. But for those in the room who knew me by my first name, they would think you were calling me by my first name. I did that? Mm -hmm. I thought that up? Yeah. I don't remember that. It was, I remember it. I, I, I always tell that story, except now when I couldn't remember it. <laughs> well, you know, that's how it goes. So anyway, I'm hiding my bald spot again yeah. because... Um, you know, I'm feeling better, a lot better. I feel really good, and I wish I had more hair, and I don't want to show off my bald spot. I wish I didn't care about my bald spot, could, which could, when I could, was still really sick, since I we, didn't care. Since we have <laughs> video here, would you like to show it to us? Show what? The bald spot. No. Oh, okay. All right. No. You know, you're the one who goes, is get older, get used to it, be embrace I, it, you I, know. I didn't and say I, figured, I am without and, 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 and I'm the first one to say embrace your baldness. <laughs> well, you know, I do have my contradictions. I wish it were different. Yeah, yeah. But I do have that. Well, my wife's hair is thinning out a bit, you know, and she's not taking iron. You know, I seem to know a lot of women friends that have a lot of hair. Really oh, irritates really? me. <laughs> Well, I mean, she has a lot of hair, but it is thinning, and your hair does get thin, you know. Oh, the you hair, is, individual hairs get yeah. thinner, too. Yeah. And, you know, and my hair had been thinning without chemo and without iron, so, mm -hmm. yeah. But I got to read you something very funny. Yeah. I wrote about, um, you know, I, I wrote about the iron on my blog, the iron infusions, and I have the most wonderful readers who leave comments. Yeah. One of them, whose name I can't remember, I got to read this to you. Uh left a comment about the iron infusions uh she said on the plus side of your week-long iron infusions you can now take all your refrigerator magnets and stick them on yourself <laughs> 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 thereby freeing up the fridge for that ever-present and so important to-do list <laughs> so i could put them all over me <laughs> oh boy pretty funny pretty yeah. funny um, there, there's some good news. What's the good news? Uh, did I tell you about this lump I have over here? Oh, yeah, you told me about that lump, and I read on your uh, blog about it, but go ahead and tell them. Yes, and so, you know, it's been there for more than a decade, just sitting there doing nothing, and then yeah. suddenly it gets bigger at the end of the day now. So a week ago, I had a biopsy. They stick needles in there and take yeah. out cells, and I had to wait until Friday, and it came back benign. So... <sighs> great relief yeah there's yeah. even a name for it and we'll figure out what it's we're called do lump it. on the side of the neck yes but you know the thing is once you've had cancer everything that goes wrong in your life you think is cancer oh yeah again. yeah <laughs> uh, 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 uh let me just turn your mic down for a second because we get what we call slap back now it's okay okay fine anyway um uh i um uh, you know, I, I keep, as I was, I, I said this to, to Will yesterday as well, uh, that I keep waiting for the thing where I go in and I say, I've got this little, my, my toe is twitching. And they go, oh, it's, <laughs> that's very bad. And it's cancer and it's going to kill you. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm waiting for that doctor, right? Yeah. So, so every time I have uh, a new doctor to go to, like I went to this neurologist I'm figuring, now oh, the numb feet, it means I've got some kind of a heart problem, whatever. No, he says it's a kind of a spinal stenosis and you need to have physical therapy. That's good. Oh, that's good, yeah. Um, go get a massage once every week or something. But you know what happened with me? Now, tell me this, because you, you would remember. Did I have hair on my legs? I don't remember. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, I don't have hair on my legs anymore. 
Well, you know, I'll tell and you that... under my armpits, I hardly have any hair left. Yes, that's happened to me, too. You don't have any hair on your head either. What did you expect the rest of your body? Well, this is different than this in the armpits. <laughs> How? Well, How to begin with, I was counting on take, surgically taking the hair from my armpits and putting it on my head. Oh, but, you, you know. thought that was going to work. Ah, yeah, well. But, no, I, I what I understood was you bald... Well, you gray from the t uh, from the bottom up, is it? I I think your beard. If you have a beard, you'll go gray first in your beard before your hair goes gray. That, that most guys, when they still have regular, you know, brown or black or whatever they have, yeah. when they still have that on their head, they they if they have chin whiskers, they go gray first. You've yeah. seen that. Yeah. But but anyway, I I I don't have hair on my body anymore. I mean, I have some on my a little bit on my chest little bit but they're flimsy yeah well it's one more thing they don't tell you about about growing old <laughs> you lose everything yes. you, it, i have less hair on my legs too i don't have to shave them as frequently yeah yeah uh, I, I think my wife said she's having the same problem god getting old sucks i don't care what you write in your blog it sucks yeah well if you can't change it are you going to sit around and lament no no, absolutely okay. not. Uh, but I should go out and kick my heels up, only I don't have the strength. So, uh, <laughs> Isn't it a wonderful, given all, everything that's wrong in the world, isn't the story of the soccer team all being rescued wonderful? Yes, except for the fact that I tried to get news on it today. And when we're recording this is the oh, day... Oh, and you've got Trump instead. <laughs> you've got Trump with his fucking you know, Supreme Court justice, and I don't give right. a shit about that. You know, yeah. I really don't. Uh, oh, well, I mean, it, it looked like it looked so impossible from the drawings of the mountain that they're stuck in and the river in there and they don't know how to swim. And I mean, they're tight. They're, they're young. They're little kids. Yeah. And uh, and they did it. They did it. You know, there was one um, Thai Navy SEAL who died. Yeah, uh, which is really terrible. But, but the kids and the coach all got out. It's just uh, in in the world we live in, that is such great news. Yeah, no, it it, it is absolutely wonderful. You know that that they they managed to get them out, and I wanted to see that story. And all I'm getting are stories about this fucking Supreme Court nominee with the bad skin. You know. <laughs> Did you have to go that far? <laughs> I mean, Durst wanted to keep joking about the fact that his name is Brett. <laughs> you know, imagine hey, was, hey, hey, hey. My surgeon, who is the whole reason I'm still alive, his name is Brett. Well, then I won't diss the name Brett. Then. <laughs> and so, Just so, Durst and I in private moments will do it. <laughs> Not in front of you. Uh, but uh, anyway, you you look healthy as hell. I mean, except for that schmata you're wearing on your head. Oh, it look it. It's a beautiful hat. What's wrong? Why with Why did this you hat? wear a babushka? I think that would go good on you. A what? A babushka. You know the the handkerchief around the head. I do that when I'm cleaning house. I'll wear it next time. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, how big how big is the bald spot? I mean, is it? Well, it's not completely bald. It's just so thin you can see my my scalp through it. There's oh. no way to not see my scalp. I see. Could and it's back here in the back, and it's getting much thinner in the front now, too. Now, how long do they keep doing these iron infusions? Oh, I'm done. I had six. I'm done. Okay, so will the hair grow back now? Uh, questionable. Nobody. I, I think the answer is no, and they didn't want to tell me. <laughs> well, you, you know, it's funny. I, I, you, know, you, you want a little better answer than that. Here's, here's the point I'm making. Well, like yesterday when I went to this doctor for the for what we thought was neuropathy, but he has said it's not neuropathy, okay? The numbness in the feet. And he says it happens when you lie down because you're hitting a nerve and the nerve is causing it to exacerbate and whatever. He said, I don't know, but I've heard some people say that putting a pillow between your legs will help. Well, it doesn't help me. But... The, <laughs> Uh, the fact was that he said to me, some people have told me that putting a pillow between your legs, you're a <coughs> neurologist for crying out loud. You have a little better scientific description of this thing than some friends told me, put a pillow between your legs. There's a whole lot medical people don't know. They do the best they can. 
you know, yeah. and sometimes it's like, you know, maybe your hair will grow back. Maybe yeah. a pillow will work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's 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 the sum total of medicine these days. Uh, someday, I don't think so. I think what I've gone through is is pretty much a miracle. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and and the interventional radiology when they went in through the side of me to fix something in here and in a hole no bigger than a pencil eraser i think that's a modern miracle you yeah. know and that it works yeah are you used to operations now oh god yes <laughs> i know my way around that hospital so well i mean to go okay just to put the juice in me let's get this thing over yeah, with exactly <laughs> It's just, I, I've kind of made a study when I've been lucid in the hospital. You know, over the past year, it adds up to almost a month over the several visits in the hospital. And I know way more than I ever wanted to know about the medical community. Well, you know, you know what I found? That I, I, it was a big deal with me when I was, uh, when I was in the hospital uh, with the kidney stone. Is, you know, they had to put a lot of, uh, draw blood on me and do stuff like that a lot. And uh, after about the, you know, I always used to, blood draw always bothered me. You know, it was always, oh, okay, you're going to put the needle in the arm. By the time I was through that hospital stay, they stick needles in my arm and I just go, go ahead, hey, take me it. Me too, I just I lay go, out my oh, arm. By the way, <laughs> I say, ahead. take it out of my hand because they have a hard time finding a vein in my, right where they normally go. So I said, just take it out of my hand here because you can see the veins there. And they go, really, you don't mind it? I said, I mind it there more than you stabbing me 20 times trying to find the vein, you know. Uh, it's but, amazing what you can get used to in old age. Yeah, well, I mean, what I'm saying is it, it, you've kind of probably gotten used to the fact, well, i got to go in for a little operation today, you know. Yeah, well, that's when I think about this, you know. There may be reasons to remove this lump, and maybe there are reasons not to remove it, and we'll figure that out. But I realize that compared to what I went through last year, go ahead. <laughs> they, should, they should replace your face and body in the operation game is what they should do. You know the operation <laughs> game? Where, did you ever play that as a kid? No. operation where there's this kind of fat guy and you have to remove his kidney but it has an electrical probe so if you touch anything wrong it buzzes that, that's the operation game i've never heard of it yeah i mean is it something that comes in a box like that's, monopoly that's obviously where my neurologist got his medical education <laughs> oh come on now come on <laughs> that's not with, nice with the put the pillows between the legs that's no, not nice. No, he's a nice guy. I have a lot of doctors who are nice guys. Uh, I just wonder if they're accurate. That's all. <laughs> you know. I found out, having nothing to do with our organ recital here, Yeah. Um, I found out two really interesting small things this week. Really? One of them is that since 2004, mm -hmm. there has been a restaurant called Rick's Cafe in Casablanca, Morocco. Since when? Since 2004. Really? And and it looks, and you can go online and look at some videos and stuff. They're not very good videos. They're mostly amateur videos, so they're not really very good. But it makes you feel like you're in Rick's Cafe, just like the movie. Well, they, it looks they, just like they, it. They, they, and it's owned by an American woman who used to be a diplomat. And the other interesting thing I just found out this morning is that in December... Uh, you know what I find interesting about that fact? That it took that long for somebody to put a Rick's Cafe in Casablanca. Uh, you know, I don't know what the political climate was right after World War II. It might not have been something you could do then, right. you know? And maybe it took a while. But you're right. That that I was kind of surprised about that, too. And, and when you go there and sit there having coffee or a drink or whatever, uh, and the piano player is obviously playing as time goes by... Uh, of course. Do, do cops come in and round up the usual suspect? <laughs> what a good idea. Yeah. What, we, should, we should write her a note. <laughs> they should set that up. Yeah. The other interesting thing from this morning, just before we called, is that Israel is sending up a spaceship in December that will land on the moon next year. Really? That's Yeah. That's what, at least that's what the Jerusalem Post says this morning. And uh, Yeah. And uh, Elon Musk will be there to greet him. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Jews in space. That's a weird concept and the fodder for great many jokes. You know. Well, start working. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have there's going to be a lot of room for them. <laughs> How far away is the moon? 239,000 miles, but for you 238. 
Yeah. Oh, you're going to get in such trouble when you post this. You are going to get in so much trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it got to be Jews and space jokes. I can't believe that they think they're really going to land some. They're going to land a man on the moon, or they're just going to land a I rocket on the moon. Enough to, not a moon. I think just a probe. Oh, oh, well, that's that's. Oh, he, that doesn't interest you. Elon Musk could do that on a Sunday. Well, he hasn't yet. Nobody could. He, he, you think so? Well, listen, wouldn't he guy, have if have he you, could? Have you seen what this guy can do? He he solved the whole problem of reusable rockets by having them simply come back and land on the pad. <laughs> come on. For years, we've been dishing them out of the ocean. He sends a thing up, does whatever does, it comes back down, and goes right back to the launch pad where they fill her up again with some more fuel and do it again. <laughs> Now, tell me he can't go to the moon if he wanted to. Well, why would he resist a man like him? Well, there was a lot of questions. If it were possible, there's no reason for him to resist. Well, in the initial, the reason we went to the moon, you know, was that uh, because it was there. Right. Once we got there, we went, what the fuck are we going to do with this place? And so we never Maybe went back. Maybe this new one will pick up all the junk we left behind. That uh, Just a cleanup job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little vacuum on it. The thing is that uh, the, uh, everybody was saying, well, what do we do now that we're there? Because the moon isn't much. But it is, no. <laughs> I think, is a good place to launch other rockets out into space. You could do it a lot easier and so on. But we never went back. Uh, I wrote a little story once about something like that, about them first men on the moon, and they land, and they find some stuff. And it turns out, really, they weren't the first that we had been there before, but why didn't we ever go back? And the fact is, we never went back. We did all that work, and we never went back. Never went back. back. Do you re you sound so cynical, but do you remember we watched the moon landing we were married at the time, and we lived in Riverdale, and we watched it on television together, and it was thrilling. Oh, yeah. It was thrilling. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, but you know what it was what that bothered me about it? I didn't feel that people in general realized the significance of what had just happened. That for the first time in the history of mankind, we had left the cradle. Well, as far as we know. Well. We had left the cradle of our existence. And uh, the, I don't think it, it, it was lost on people. They were all going, why are we spending money to do that? When blah, 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 blah. I don't think there were lots of people saying that. I think it was thrilling, and I think most people saw it that way. No, we, we had a, a internet, we had a, a American, the USA, USA, we're there first, you know, that kind of thing. You know, before we sent people to the moon, we sent probes to the moon. And they yeah. sent pictures back. And I remember before the person landing on the moon, uh, there was a big deal that uh, at a previous probe, probe that um, that it would go behind the moon, and for the first time we would see the opposite side of the moon because mm -hmm. it always has only right, one the face dark side of the moon. tortoise. Right. And there was a there was a New Yorker cartoon that I saved for years and years leading up to that that it showed the, the spaceship coming toward the moon, the back side of the moon, yeah. and it was carved out, you know, so concave, like a like a, a theater set, and it said, act two, scene one. <laughs> 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 I saved that for years and years and years. Yeah, uh, but uh, I, I uh, you know, I, I, just, I just wish we had, it, I guess if I have any regrets in my life, it's that we didn't, you didn't go to the moon. They didn't select you. No, we didn't go. We didn't go further. Uh, the fact is, if we we stopped the space program then, and the only space program we had was what I called NASA hauling. You know, it was just NASA was hauling we stuff. We went up. to Mars. Yeah, but we sent probes. I mean, sending people. But there were great well, photographs, I, and if they, they got a lot of good science if, stuff. If they had continued on the path that they were going, and not stopped. That, that space program, the really uh, the the exploration part of the space program, uh, we could have been to Mars in my lifetime. But but we're not. I, I'm not smart enough to know what the problems are. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I I, that, I mean that, it can't it can't be. Oh, I that, that was my bailiwick because when I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut, and there was no such thing as an astronaut when I wanted to be one. So how did you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, because I, I knew I wanted to go to the moon. And so all my friends used to mock me as Moon Rocks Bennett, you know, uh, or Schwarzman. Uh, and, and, uh, but I always wanted to be an astronaut. You know, I always wanted to go to space. Um, and uh, I, I never was able to. I mean, it, it's just that I would have thought that by now we'd be have, have landed somebody on Mars, and we could have by now if we hadn't stopped. And, you know, I thought by now we would have cured cancer. I mean, it's, you know, it's harder well, than us laymen think I didn't in do your these case, things. In your case, they came close, you know. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, but in general, it should be like the common cold. I thought by the time I was this old, we could treat it the same way as the common cold or the flu or something. Well, so, um, uh, I, I don't know that, believe it or not, I don't know that we've ever put the effort behind it like we should. You but, know, but cancer or space travel? A cancer. That if we ha had a concerted effort said we're going to spend a large amount of money and we're going to do it like we did with space, okay, mm -hmm. I think we could have solved it. But I don't, well, I don't think we've had that kind of priority, believe it or not. Plus... What do you do with all the lack of parking spaces if more people are still alive? Well, I, are you referring to space travel or cancer? I'm, I, I'm referring to cancer. Isn't oh. cancer a process of elimination? I don't think so. I don't think they're enough. You know, but I mean, if, if, if you could cure cancer, all right, how many more people would be alive? And how many more parking spaces would that take up? <laughs> you don't need parking spaces. I, you always, don't have a car. I have always thought in terms of parking spaces, I'm from California. <laughs> and I hear there are not enough parking spaces in San Francisco anymore. So that's because we've cured a lot of these diseases. Right, well, right. I, I figure at, at, at 78, going on 79, I'm, take, I'm, I'm taking up too much room myself, you know. I sometimes feel guilty about that. Sunday, I went to a birthday party for my friend Jack Garfine, who turned 88. Ah! Boy, is that old. My friend Millie is in the hospital this week. She's going to be 93 pretty soon. Here's the best part. He was there, <laughs> and if people go on my... Facebook page I posted the speech he gave which is about 13 minutes and it's, you can see in the same shot another guy and that's one of his friends who was also in the concentration camps they didn't know each other from the concentration camps they met each other afterwards but this other guy I have never seen he's got to be maybe in his 80s I've never seen a more healthy looking guy in my life I mean <laughs> One of the things I always talk about is that we age at dramatically different rates. Some people at 50 have had enough things go wrong or whatever, and they look really old. Other people at 90 have had terrific lives or recovered from whatever happened to them well, and they look and, and operate terrifically. You want, yeah. And it's, you can't go by age on how we, how we get old. It's different I'll, I'll, for every I'll tell person. you something, and then we, then I guess we got to go. But you, I remember you asked me to go with you to your high school reunion. Yes. And so I had never been in a room with a group of people who, within a, a year age range, okay, uh -huh. were all basically the same age. Right. Yeah. And it was amazing how some looked. You, you couldn't tell that this was a group of people all of approximately the same age because some looked really young and some looked, and some really, looked old. really old. That's yeah. what I, that would be a great photograph to have to make my point yeah. that you can't judge what people are going to be like physically by their actual age. Right. It's very different. Once you get old, yeah. um, younger you usually can if you discount big deal terrible diseases. But... Um, but it, the range, I mean, it always surprises me when I see photographs of someone. If you ask me, I would say, oh, she's probably uh, 55 or 60, and they tell me she's 82. Do you, do you get invited to your high school reunion still? No, I think they must have stopped having them. I think I got one, believe it or not. Um, Recently? A while back, uh, got something where they were going to hold one. And I'm just thinking, how many people are going to show up? I mean, it's just basically you're going to go there and who's dead? You know. Yeah, that's true. When you graduated in '57 from high school. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I graduated in 58. 68, 78, 88, 98, 08, 8. That's 60 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's 60, 61 for me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 61 yes. years. Hey, listen. You know, I, I never thought I would ever say this, but it's, it's great talking to an ex-wife. You know, I, I always <laughs> look forward to this. You know, it's, it's, it's special. Okay. Yes, it is. And yes, let's do it, it again in two weeks. Okay. Okay. You got it. Uh, or any other time you want to do it. You know, this I'll is great. You know. Hope everybody enjoyed it. And that's my, uh, that's my exer there. She's uh, Ronnie Bennett and you can find her at RonnieBennett.net. Right. No. Oh, it's time, time goes, go, time goes by dot net. I kept thinking of your email address. Time goes by dot net, and she writes some. She's a great writer, you know. Ah, oh, thank you. Thanks, Ronnie. Bye. Talk to you soon. <laughs>